हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर रोहित भिड़े डीएनबी पीडियाट्रिक्स रेसिडेंट एट एन एच चिल्ड्रंस हॉस्पिटल इन मुंबई टुडे विथ मी आई हैव डॉक्टर सुप्रतिम सेन अ पीडियाट्रिक इंटरवेंशनल कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट विथ एन एक्सपर्टीज इन पीडियाट्रिक कार्डियोलॉजी ऑफ ओवर फिफ्टीन ईयर्स डॉक्टर सेन इज अ रिव्यूअर इन मल्टीपल जर्नल्स फॉर पीडियाट्रिक कार्डियोलॉजी एंड एज हिमसेल्फ प्रेजेंटेड पेपर्स इन मल्टीपल इंटरनेशनल जर्नल्स ही इज अ सीनियर कंसल्टेंट इन पीडियाट्रिक कार्डियोलॉजी एट एन एच चिल्ड्रंस हॉस्पिटल so today we uh, we are going to discuss the topic of interventional modalities of management of patent ductus arteriosus so hello sir so my first question for you is what is exactly patent ductus arteriosus so patent ductus arteriosus is also known as pda and if you see the normal heart on the right side we have the impure or the blue blood flowing which goes into the lung artery and then it comes back to the left side and we have the pure blood flowing on the left side which goes into the aorta which is the body artery so when a baby is born there's a communication between these two vessels that is known as a pda so normally within a few days of life the pda closes off spontaneously in patients where it remains open that is when we call those patients as a patent ductus arteriosus sir as you explained that when it stays open we call it patent ductus arteriosus so how does it exactly present and which children at what age group does it exactly present right so the presentation can be varied depending on different age groups we can have patients who are preterm babies where it presents uh, with breathlessness the patient might be oxygen dependent the patient might require ventilatory support also and these babies then require treatment in the preterm age itself uh, while they are in nicu you might have a presentation later on in life within the first year or so where the patient, uh, the child has poor growth they have recurrent pneumonias they have feeding difficulty they are uh, getting tired with feeds they have excessive sweating and these pdas then have to be closed within the first few months of life maybe within 3 to 6 months in older children they might just present with a murmur that is an extra sound in the heart and those children are treated if we see that the heart size is larger than normal due to this pda okay sir so having identified a patent ductus arteriosus what are the different management modalities that are currently available so the traditional management of any heart disease including pda is a surgical management and in fact pda surgery was the first pediatric cardiac surgery done and that was done in the mid 1950s but over the last 20 to 30 years pdas are generally closed in the cath lab by interventional techniques which is what we specialize in and over the last 10 years or so we are even treating preterm babies with a special device in the cath lab so nowadays it is very common for us as interventional pediatric cardiologists to close pdas in the cath lab without any surgical scar and this is done even in babies as small as say 600 or 800 grams and in only very rare situations is the child with a pda sent for a surgical treatment okay sir so when i am reading pediatric cardiology we come across terms like duct dependent lesions lesions where pda is essential for life so can you explain uh, let's talk more on this issue right. so if you compare the pda with a duct dependent lesion this is a relatively normal heart with just an isolated pda and here the pda is actually harmful to the baby and we would close it compare that to these conditions which is known as pulmonary atresia and you'll see here that the pulmonary artery or the lung artery isn't really getting blood from the right side of the heart so in these babies the only way the blood can reach the lungs is through the patent ductus arteriosus so you have the blood going into the body artery and then through this pda the blood reaches the lungs so when you have a condition known as pulmonary atresia where the blood has to reach the lungs through the pda then actually you need to keep the pda open and in those conditions we do a different set of procedures known as a pda stenting so it's important to differentiate between a device closure of a pda where we are actually closing a pda which is not required 
and stenting of a PDA where we are actually keeping a PDA open and that is that PDA then becomes essential for that baby. So here is a child where we have put a stent into the PDA. So if you can see a stent is like a spring uh, which goes over a balloon and we would inflate the balloon in the PDA and then we leave that stent inside and we come out with the balloon. So this helps us to maintain the pulmonary blood flow uh, while the child grows older. So now as you, ex you expertise in pediatric interventional cardiology, so device closure is one of your strong domains. So how do you go about it exactly when you plan for a procedure like PDA device closure? How do you go about it? So any child who comes to us with a PDA, first we decide if the lesion is significant enough to require treatment. And once we have decided that this needs to be treated, then we have to decide whether the child is going to go for a device closure or for surgery. Now, in terms of a PDA device, and in fact for any device closure procedure, the crux of the procedure is we have to occlude the defect and a device is like a button shaped uh, uh, medical device which has to be put in the PDA to occlude it. But we also need to make sure that there is no obstruction to the surrounding structures. Right. So as you saw in the images, the surrounding structures here are the aorta and the pulmonary artery. So the device should not cause any blockage to the surrounding structures. Generally speaking, uh, PDA devices are done from the vessels of the groin. So once the patient comes to the cath lab, we put in catheters through the groin, we go into the heart, we go into the PDA, we put the device and once we are satisfied with the position of the device, we then unscrew our delivery cable and leave the device there. Now coming to PDA stenting, PDA stenting also is the same interventional type of a procedure. Okay. So we can access uh, the baby's vessels through the groin vessels. We can also access through the neck vessels. So the stenting remember is done only in small babies, not in older children. And in these patients uh, of late over the last two years or so, we are now taking help of our cardiac surgeons. So uh, they will give us a surgical cut down of the neck vessel and through that we enter uh, the PDA from above and we put our uh, PDA stent in that to keep it open. Also I would like to st uh, stress here one other difference between a PDA stenting and a PDA device. A PDA stenting is a palliative procedure, meaning that it is not the end of the treatment for that child. Right. These children will come back to us maybe six months or one year later for their definitive procedure, which is a surgical treatment where the surgeons would then completely correct the defects in the right. heart. While a PDA device is a standalone corrective treatment where you just have to do a single procedure in the life of that child and they are fine for the rest of their life. Okay, sir. Thank you for explaining that so clearly that the difference between a device stenting and how, how the exactly it is different from each other. Now, uh, after it is done, what are the kind of monitoring that is required in these kind of scenarios for device and stenting? How long does a patient exactly follow? What medications are required? And like as you explained, any redo interventions whether required. Correct. So in a device child, we normally would discharge them and then we see them after a month, then maybe after about three to four months and then once a year. And this goes on at least for the next four to five years. Okay. And then we can discharge them from follow up. A stent child, because they are a bit more critical, we would do closer follow up. Also with any stent, as you might have heard for coronary stents also, uh, these patients require uh, medications to keep that stent open. As we mentioned, a PDA in a stented child is the only source of blood flow to the lungs. Right. So we give medications which will not allow blood to clot in the stent. And these patients are then followed up every few months till we think they are of the right age and weight for their corrective surgical procedure. Sir, another thing I wanted to ask regarding PDA device closure as you explained it is a standalone procedure which helps lifelong so when these children are transitioning into the adulthood uh, do they face any kind of complications or heart failure which occurs probably later in their life 
No, so PDA device closure is done quite early in childhood and by the time they are crossing over to the adult services, let us say after 18 years of age, we generally don't even need to keep them on a regular follow-up because the within six months of the procedure, the device actually gets endothelialized, which means that it becomes part of the internal wall of the heart. Uh, there are patients who present to us very late and that is a condition where you might have a large PDA and those patients actually have damage to their lungs because of the right. flow through the PDA and that is a condition known as Eisenmenger syndrome okay. and those patients have a different type of treatment generally those children cannot be treated by a device closure okay. we have to keep them on a medical follow-up uh, and that is a different spectrum of disease but generally speaking, if you treat PDAs in time, they have a normal life and uh, there is no future complication which we have to worry about. So having explained so beautifully, now we would like to know what are the benefits and limitations of a device and stenting and when to go for it and when to refrain from it. Right. So as I mentioned, once you have decided that the child needs to be treated, that is your first decision. Then you have to bifurcate between who goes for device or stenting for that matter, the treatment which is done in the cath lab and who goes for a surgical treatment which is done in the theatre. So generally speaking, if you have a child where you can put in the device safely without causing any block to the surrounding structures, device closure is always preferred because they have a much faster recovery and the morbidity after the procedure is much less. Surgery is, uh, in terms of closing a PDA, is only indicated if the PDA is so large that putting in that large size device will cause blockage to the surrounding structures, one. Or if you have associated lesions, say you have other holes in the heart, which will anyway require surgery, then obviously you would do all the things surgically at once. For the stenting, again, stenting is now a primary modality to keep the PDA open. But there are patients where we feel that the case is not right for stenting, maybe because of the course of the PDA, uh, maybe because of the way the pulmonary arteries are coming off the PDA. And those patients then go for a surgical procedure known as a BT shunt instead of the stent. At Narayana Health SRCC Children's Hospital, we have both kind of modalities which are available. So how commonly does it, is it being done in SRCC hospital? So these are very common procedures for us. Generally, a PDA device is the commonest procedure done by any pediatric interventional cardiologist. And every month we must be doing, uh, I would say anywhere between uh, 10 to 20 of these procedures. A stent is done in a rarer subset of patients. And uh, these patients present to us, uh, I would say maybe uh, two to three of these procedures every month. Sir, any take-home messages for the viewers? So, I would like to stress that uh, interventional techniques are now very safe and we as interventional pediatric cardiologists have gained a huge experience in them. We have long-term follow-up for over 15 to 20 years with these uh, patients and they are doing exceedingly well. So, any child where there is a suspected heart defect, uh, PDA or anything else, they should be referred to a pediatric cardiologist so that they can be assessed and then we can decide on the optimal time of treatment. Also, stenting is one such procedure where you need good surgical team backup. So, this is not a procedure which should be done in smaller peripheral centers where we don't have experienced pediatric cardiac surgeons. So this is basically where the teamwork comes in, where you need the cardiac team. Definitely. And uh, th this is the type of procedure which should be done in a tertiary pediatric cardiac center. Okay. We can also talk a bit about expenses. So uh, I think often parents are a bit concerned that these procedures might be terribly expensive True. and uh, they might not be able to afford it. But nowadays, thanks to government schemes, a lot of these procedures actually do get government funding. Right. So, uh, thankfully, we work in a setup where even if the patient is non-affording, we are able to offer them the best of treatment uh, because we have the government funding to support us. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, for explaining this PDA topic along with 
this device closure stenting and different kind of complications and benefits so i'd like to thank you for your time with this total session if anyone has any doubts you can post in the comment section and we'll answer your questions thank you so much for attending thank you thank you sir